In the last episode from the weekend, uh, you guys saw that I was going to address the angle of attack for Rover's uh, navigation here in the front. And as you can see, he's, uh, he's in a bit of a disarray at the moment. And it's because I've been kind of troubleshooting different mounting options for how to adjust these sensors. And let's start by talking through kind of what I've tried and what I've realized. As you can see, I've taken down the front left sensor and I've been playing around with it with various combinations. Uh, I even shaved down uh, one of these spacers to try to figure out how to mount this ultimately at an angle, either kind of 30 degrees-ish or 45 degrees-ish, um, and trying to figure out basically just how to get that to not only hold in that position, but also you know, considering that this is mounted on the front of uh, Rover's chassis, you know, to do it in a way that looks in keeping with the rest of his design, which I, I like for the most part. And that proved actually quite difficult to do. Um, I've got a few options. Probably the most likely solution would be to, to do up some sort of uh, custom bracket that I could uh, kind of shave down from some spare ABS plastic. Now, that being said, in trying to figure out how to actually do this, I realized that it's probably not the right solution anyway. At this point, you know, of course, that Rover's got these two ultrasonic sensors in the um, front left, front right position. He's got the infrared sensor up in the middle uh, on the center of Rover's front facing chassis. Uh, he's got additional infrared sensors under all these wires on the left and right of his chassis. The infrared sensors are more precise um, and they have greater range, um, but they won't work well or at all, uh, I don't actually know for certain yet, um, once Rover goes outdoors. And of course with these monster tires, he is designed to go both indoors and outdoors, which I look forward to very much. Now, that being said, if I were to angle these ultrasonic sensors, which we need for Rover's outdoor navigation capability um, front facing, it leaves this big gap right in the middle, which is actually kind of important. Uh, so I kind of come to the conclusion that these need to actually stay forward facing in order to address Rover's outdoor forward navigation obstacle avoidance, which leaves, of course, the question mark about how to address the angle obstacle avoidance which we saw in yesterday's episodes. One option is to actually take these left and right side sensors, infrared sensors, off and to remount them in a position that could rotate on a servo uh, from a kind of straight out side um, orientation to an angled 45 degree orientation for that kind of angled obstacle avoidance that we need indoors. That's one option. And it might be the best option, I don't know yet, but what I've decided on is basically just to do further testing with Rover's ability to navigate indoors, um, specifically down the hallway, and then figure out exactly what implementation is going to work best. With that being said, I've updated the hallway program, as you can see here. It, I've taken a bit of a different approach Firstly, um, the program itself only has two commands, a settings, initial settings command and a drive forward command. Everything else you see here is related to a possible encounter with forward obstacles or side obstacles, which would trigger either the 10001 or 10004 event code. So in the case of a forward obstacle, basically Rover will announce the obstacle, um, reverse a little bit, uh, in, uh, switch over his servos into a spin turn, which would basically rotate each of the four servos into a diagonal uh, position ready for a circular rotation. Um, we evaluate the side sensors to determine whether or not there's an obstacle on either the left or right after a forward obstacle event. So the, the uh, case here, which can get a little bit confusing, is we've encountered a forward obstacle, but we're evaluating the side sensors. Uh, because basically we know that we've encountered the forward obstacle, but in order to determine which direction, left or right, we want to turn, we want to verify that there's no obstacle on either the left or right, um, which neither have been in yet triggered, but we want to make sure that we're all clear. Um, and then, of course, uh, we'll drive in response to that side sensor evaluation, we'll drive either right or uh, left um, in that spin orientation, and then straighten out the wheels. In the case of a side sensor event, again, we'll announce the, uh, the side sensor, side obstacle um, 
encounter. We'll evaluate, in this case, still the side sensors, and then we will rotate the servos into a diagonal, either right or left orientation, followed by a drive command, and then straightening out the wheels again. We're going to send over the hallway program to Rover, and essentially I just want to make sure that he's responding correctly, kind of as expected, to both a forward event and side event. And we'll even try maybe uh, see if we can trigger the forward left or right sensor versus the center sensor. See if we can have Rover react differently in those three different situations before we put him on the ground and have him actually do it in real life. So I just sent it forward. We'll start with a forward event straight on. I'll just get let him get going here and then move the obstacle forward. Forward obstacle. And here we have him rotating all four wheels into a spin orientation. Now he'll start rolling using his differential drive. And now he's straightening out his wheels after the drive. I did notice a problem though. And let me show you in the command center what happened. The problem we ran into was that the, the drive command here, the left turn differential drive command, that he was executing. He reported a waiting forward obstacle. Prior to being able to execute the differential turn um, in his spin orientation of the wheels, we ended up having him blocked because he's programmed right now to not drive until it's all clear. So unfortunately, a very simple test ended up basically triggering all sorts of other problems or making me realize all sorts of other problems. But basically what happened was, as it would be in real life, he encountered the obstacle and in previous tests where I was just using my hand, I would block the sensor and then move my hand away. And in this situation, I left the obstacle there, just like as it would be where he encountered a wall, for example. The wall's not going anywhere like my hand would. Uh, he's programmed, he's hard-coded programmed into the Arduino Uno to wait until the obstacle is clear. Basically, wait until my hand is away before he starts moving forward. Of course, the wall didn't move, so he kept on waiting until I move the board away. So what I need to do is actually two things. One is the hard-coded uh, obstacle waiting has to be removed out of the Uno and put into the cloud, into the command center, so that we can have uh, different reactions to that event depending on what we want, what we're having him do. Uh, when he's turning, we obviously don't want him to be waiting indefinitely, but when he's driving forward, we may want him to be driving, uh, to, to wait until the obstacle is cleared since we issued the drive command to go forward, wait. So we need that ability to be flexible just like all the other event action codes. The additional problem is that that particular type of event is like an interrupt. Uh, so when we send program event, uh, program commands to Rover, we send them in a like in a block. So we say, for example, update your settings, drive forward, do this, do this, do that. And all, all the instructions are sent uh, together. And this would actually have to interrupt that otherwise order of events and say, actually, before you continue, do this. And that is a little bit complicated to implement. So I've got to figure out how to do that kind of interrupt in the order in the sequence of commands related to a particular program, and I'm not yet sure how to do it. So here we're looking at the Arduino Uno code that I need to update. And here specifically, we have the um, current kind of old code, uh, where you can see basically if we drive uh, direction number two, which is reverse, then we issue all clear because we have no reverse sensors at this point, so we might as well assume that it's all clear. Um, in any other case, basically, I was evaluating the forward sensors and side sensors and determining what should be all clear. But the way I had gone about it um, wasn't working as we saw uh, today. So what I've done is I've issued, I've set up this new code, uh, a switch case uh, scenario, where in the different cases, like one being forward, two reverse, the different numbers basically equate to different values associated with Rover's different directions of uh, turning and driving. So in different situations we want to evaluate different sensors to determine whether or not it's all clear. Um, in the case of a right turn we only really care about the right sensor, that sort of thing. Um, so this code should work. I'm going to upload it to Rover. We'll do a couple of tests and see if that solves problem number one. So we're sending over the hallway program one more time 
And this time we're going to block the forward sensor, uh, forward center center just as before. And I'm going to leave the board here just as we did before. Um, the issue that we ran into last time was that when I left the board, forward obstacle. So we're just going to start running through the commands associated with the hallway program. When we left the board in place before, just as a wall would remain in place um, in a real life scenario, following Rover's reorientation of his servos for a spin turn, which he's doing now, he then went to drive in that orientation and couldn't because we had it set at don't, don't drive forward or don't drive at all actually if there's an obstacle blocking your sensor. So what we're looking for now is for Rover to initiate the drive, which he's doing now. If we now send over a, uh, not a program, simply a drive forward command, but I keep Rover's forward sensor blocked. Um, so he's going to attempt to do a drive, but he's not able to do a drive until I move the board away. And as soon as I move it away, he drives forward. So basically- Excuse me. So basically we've got both scenarios working. So I managed to fix at least one of the problems that we ran into and didn't get nearly as far as I thought I would with the test that we started out doing this morning. We left the... I actually had to leave the programming on the Arduino board directly and the reason for that is not everything can be moved to the cloud, to the command center. The reason is his response to the sensors needs to be immediate. So. The, even though Rover checks with the command center every two seconds right now, and of course that's configurable, and it does vary depending on circumstances. When he goes into standby, it changes to every 10 seconds, as an example. That being said, his response to sensor events needs to be immediate in some cases, such as when he is driving and he encounters an obstacle, we don't want him to check with the command center what he should do and then wait for the response and then execute that instruction because that could be two or four seconds later or even more in some cases in which case he would have already run into the wall and his kind of butting his head against the wall a similar situation happens where he is about to execute a command and he's blocked we need him to have some programming on board that tells him at least uh, from a, a very fundamental standpoint, what he should be doing, whether he should be going forward, meaning pro progressing uh, with his commands or not. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get back to the tests that I originally wanted to do, verifying that, that Rover's response to different sensors is what we intended, and that will then allow us to get back to the hallway drive test. So if you're as curious as I am as to how that actually comes together, subscribe to get notified. Give us a thumbs up. Use the comments down below on YouTube or over on Rover's site. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.